Hi! So, this is gonna be another bit of a rant video. Get ready for that. So yesterday in Fantasy News, I covered this story where one of the VFX senior people involved with The Witcher show made the comment that they are actively taking fantastical elements out and making the show more horrific. And I kind of had a confused response to that because I was like, there's directly magic in it and horror doesn't detract from fantasy. And people seem to think either one, I was misinterpreting what he was saying, or two, it just wasn't that big a deal point that I should just completely let it go. And the argument that I was missing interpreting what he was saying is absolutely fair because he was specifically referring to creature and monster designs it seems and the article did a poor job of kind of pointing that out instead of trying to get more clickbaity which I fell for that this is just actually the whole Witcher show as a whole will be less fantastical even though the showrunner has come out and said no it's a fantasy show and it's going to be fantastical as all hell and other people like even Sam Sykes have fallen for this and it's just unfortunate that this happens on the internet and we all have this <laughs> instinctual reaction but I want to go back to one point here. Even if he is still just referring to the creature designs, that's wrong and it pisses me off a bit. Let me clarify why. Now, understand, this is a hill I'm willing to die on, and it's something I've been debating for a long time. So whatever, like, pet peeve thing you have that's been driving you nuts for years, this is that for me. If you're like a car guy who gets pissed off whenever people, like, open up their engine and just start saying shit, that's obviously completely wrong. Same vibe. Same wavelength, all right? It's a pet peeve, G get with me here. Feel me, feel me, good. And I want people to start fighting this war with me, please. Fantasy is not a mutually exclusive genre with pretty much anything else. And it's been a problem for fantasy that people tend to exclude it or try and distance from it since its foundation. Now, this is becoming less of a problem due to the recent rise of fantasy and the more and greater respect it's given. And that's why I'm fighting all the harder. I wanna push this back. I wanna squash this stupid idiotic belief that just because you make something more horrific, it's less fantastical. Dracula is a fantasy creature. He's a horror icon, but he's a fantasy creature. L let's look at the definition of the fantasy genre. By definition, fantasy is a genre that typically features the use of magic or other supernatural phenomena in the plot, setting, or theme. Magical or mythological creatures often feature, as well as races other than humans, such as elves, dwarves, or goblins. Great definition. And what I have to say to that is, do you think Jason Voorhees is real? <laughs> it's a paranormal phenomena. And again, you're probably thinking, not that big a deal. Okay, whatever. Some horror movies are a little bit fantasy. It's one of their subgenres. And that's the point I'm trying to make, especially a lot of the greatest films of all time. Night of the Living Dead is one of the best horror movies ever, probably in the top 100 movies ever. I love this movie, but no one thinks of it as fantasy. It's just a horror movie. It's just one of the greatest horror movies of all time. And this continually happens. This is one prime example where now it's not lumped in with fantasy. So fantasy doesn't get the credit for many of the great elements of that story that help tell the themes and display this great piece of cinema that would not be possible without fantasy. Zombies are a fantasy creature. And zombies come from Haitian mythology. Just like a lot of fantasy creatures, almost all of them that we think of as that's core fantasy originate from Europe mythology. Now, I'm not trying to get into like some weird, this is racial, like only white cultures can have fantasy creatures. No, I, I don't believe that entirely. And I'm trying to say the opposite. If your creature is inspired by mythology, if it comes from that, you got fantasy right there. <laughs> any culture, any creature that comes from their mythology that is then put in your story and made to be real within the context of this story, that is a fantasy creation. Now, I'm not saying even the primary genre is fantasy, but I want to keep this battle going where yes, fantasy should be absolutely in the subgenres and appreciated for lending the elements that allow you to tell your story to begin with. Most great horror movies have fantastical elements and that's why they're able to do so. Granted, not all, many of them are about serial killers and just normal people, hush, Netflix. Just no paranormal, nothing. That's not fantasy. Just a serial killer, dude. But it follows The Shining, The Exorcist. Okay, I'm gonna make some people who believe in Exorcist mad, but you know what I'm saying. Many of these films that will be constantly critically praised gain many of the elements that allow them to be such horrifying, great stories from the fantasy genre. Do you know how not scary these stories would be if they didn't have their fantasy elements? Like Jason Voorhees, just a guy with a machete. Me and like two dudes could take him out, just tackle him and stomp on him a lot. 
It's the fantasy that makes it successful horror. So when people start talking about fantasy and they go, oh, that's the fairy tale bullshit, the Witcher, yeah, okay, whatever. That's why I believe we see quotes like these from people who are like, oh, you're thinking Witcher's like fairy tale fantasy. I don't want you to think that. I'm gonna say it's horror. It's a horror. It's not fantasy. <laughs> We're taking the fantasy elements out. And that's damaging to the fantasy genre, something I care about and love Deeply. It feels like I'm rooting for a player who keeps scoring touchdowns or being involved in assists and gets no credit. And just like they're, they're constantly praising the other guy. It's like how Michael Jordan is remembered and Scottie Pippen, not talked about enough. Great basketball player, needs to be spoken on more. Just completely overshadowed by Michael Jordan. And that's my best attempt at a sports metaphor. How'd I do? It's why I've been championing Stephen King books to be uh, somewhat reclassified as fantasy. And again, I'm not trying to take away the horror label. I just find them to be so completely different it becomes even confusing that they're both genres in some ways because fantasy is more about story elements well horror is more about themes and atmosphere and it's just kind of annoying to see this blanket that once it comes over top just people don't think about the fact that these are fantastical elements freddy krueger say it with me fantasy creature debate me horror fantasy creature but fantasy creature now i'm well aware there's a whole other conversation that needs to be had about uh, the confusion with science fiction and fantasy. That's not the hill we're fighting in this video. That's a that's another day. We'll we'll cover that in, in another time. But yeah, science fiction and fantasy bleed into each other a lot. And there's no better example. It's a textbook, beautiful example to dive into and pull apart than Star Wars. But even then, once fantasy and sci-fi elements blend, sci-fi just tends to completely overtake the fantasy and just ride it out and get all the credit. It's really annoying. I have this child I'm so proud of that I've seen grown up and just take off in these last couple decades. But now it's just like, it keeps having these amazing achievements and everyone's like, nope, no credit, no credit at all. So all that I ask, and I know this is just a weird, angry video. All that I ask is the next time you're watching a horror movie or really any movie that has something that is impossible, something that is a fantasy element introduced, and it greatly enhances the story by allowing it to achieve new heights, by bringing in just new directions for the story to go, or just elevating the uh, tension, what have you, you know, as horror often does. Give fantasy some credit, you know, pour one out, Pour one out for fantasy a little bit on the side, not on your carpet, that, that'd be messy, especially if it's not water, but pour something out somewhere, preferably into a sink or a toilet if you uh, don't want to deal with that. But in conclusion, that story was completely blown out of proportion. It was a visual effects artist who probably just made these comments completely without thinking and has no idea that he's made the internet explode in such a way uh, where that headline got sent to me, I think like four or five times in a day, uh, but yes, it's it's a thing that it offhandedly can be said that uh, that that bothers me a bit. It, it annoys me because I I'm just constantly seeing fantasy uh, done dirty, and I don't want to see my boy done dirty. Look on a mask with my boy. Anyway, guys, if you have not already, like and subscribe hit the patreon if you want to support what i do here and i just finished uh recording my first audiobook i'm done it's it's finito i believe uh, unless i get more spot edits but i think i've been through the last round of them and i'm i'm proud of that I'm proud of that one and you know what that means it means i get to turn around and narrate my own audiobook because i've proven myself i can do it and i'm gonna start narrating my stories pressure's on have a good one y'all peace and of course, I want to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Madison Goodyear. Thank you so much for joining the community. We, uh, we love having you. These are going to be a bit out of order, unfortunately, because I've had to push back a couple of videos I recorded and did shout outs on. So if you're a new Patreon, you haven't heard your name yet. Trust me, it's coming.